Hello saviors and welcome, my name is Savar24 and today I'm going to be continuing West of Loathing. Now in the last one I kind of extended a little bit too much, but this time around I'm going to be doing a little bit of adventuring outside of the Dirt Water Town area. USB and empty whiskey bottle sitting on top of a fence post about 60 paces away. Try to shoot it requires 5 moxie I do not have, it's not worth the bullet. Sorry. Anyways, the situation on, on that I'm going to this time is I'm going to be heading to the Stearns Ranch. Which I have absolutely no idea as to what's going to be happening here. All I see is a bunch of haystacks, which I'm going to bet I can get some needles. Yay, some needles in a haystack. I'm going to get three of those. Nice. It's your partner. Another ranch turn bound by friggin' cows. Damn, that steams to me up something fierce. Guess we should check for survivors. What do you think we should do next? Am I forgetting about anything? And then there's my uh, ghost horse, Undyne. I, I I pray that you guys at least caught on that little little joke that I was making there. It's a safe. The safe is scorched, but its contents are probably still well safe. Requires safe cracking, which I don't have. There's still some food on the shelf. Soda crackers, instant grits, clove drops? There's a weird cow-shaped stain on the wall. Probably where a cow was... Or a cow spirit thing was at. I don't know. It's a button cactus. You pick the edible bits off. Cactus bits. That's nice. Between the smoke and the noise, you're guessing that the contents of this outhouse are more dangerous than average outhouse contents. Oh, it requires a fight. Mary Stearns, Gwendolyn Stearns, the flower is smoking. I got a smoking chrysanthemum, whatever that is. Looks like Jethro's bones were dug up by some varmint or another. I got a charred locket, which I have no idea what that is. And then there's Jethro Stearns. So what's in the house? Let's see what's in the house before we actually fight anything. It's a lockbox. True to the name, it's locked. Requires lockpicking. I thought I was able to do that. There's still some beans in this pot. I got blackened beans. All of the books on this shelf are burned, but you notice something strange about the back of the shelf. I have just enough moxie to do it. Mary Stern's Diary. Your deaf fingers find a hidden cache and the black and the back panel of the shelf slides away to reveal a secret compartment. There's a book inside. The toy box contains a single object, a creepy burnt porcelain doll, which requires five mysticality. It's the work of it's the work of a moment to fix the doll's voice box. You pull the string, the doll's eyes roll back into its head and its mouth begins to move. Hi, I'm Grace. What's your name? Hi, Savar, you're nice. Do you want to play with me? Okay, that's, uh, yes, let's play. Hooray, Mary used to play with me, but we didn't get to finish her tea party before she went away. Will you help me finish it? Surely. Hooray, the game is almost over. Mary did such a good job. The dice roll, eyes roll back forward. Go downstairs and get my cup. Do you know the magic word to make the new cow let you into a secret room? Secret room? No, what is it? The magic word is peanut butter. The doll goes silent. <laughs> you shudder as you realize that talking dolls haven't been invented yet. Yeah, that doll is possessed. Nothing left. Damn those devils. Alrighty then. Well, we're not done here yet. Apparently we're going to be using peanut butter. Did someone say peanut butter? The Stearns Ranch Altar, okay. Atop this sinister looking altar sits a copper goblet filled with what appears to be blood. Requires five muscle in order to destroy the goblet. A chill runs down your spine as you touch the goblet of blood. Now what? I couldn't exactly destroy it, it wouldn't let me. What in Sam Hill? What does this cow skull painted up on the wall for? That's a little weird, yeah. Who would you, who would do a thing like that, and why? Hmm. Probably people who were trying to make a deal with the devil. 
That's about the only logical explanation I can find on this one. Make tea, we can now finish our tea party. Sure, why not? You carefully pour the book into Grace's mouth. Grace leaps out of the toy box laughing menically and and climbs the ranch house's ruined chimney. She turns toward you. See you soon. She lifts to the ground behind the house and scampers off to the northwest. That's probably fine. Who knows what the hell's gonna happen with that? Alright, so let's check my inventory. I got blackened beans. Increase your spell damage by five for the rest of the day. Very nice. Um, charred locket. You should call it a locket on account for how lucky it was to escape the fire. It reminds you why they call it a locket. Pick the locket. Locket lock. I got a picture of Mary Stern. It's a photograph of a serious little looking little girl on the back is written Mary Stearns, Thanksgiving 1894. Sad. This is a goblet of blood from a cursed altar in a spooky super basement room. It's probably safe and fine and good. Probably not. Let's see what Mary Stearns' diary has. The A in diary are crossed out and IA written above. The diary starts out as typical kid stuff. You flip ahead until you notice the writing getting shakier found a doll under a cactus out back and she told me her name was Grace. Mama and Papa don't believe me that she talks. They say I got a big imagination. Grace says the cows are gonna get us, but Papa says we'll be okay because this, this weren't never a cow ranch. Grace says he's wrong, but Papa won't believe me. Grace says she can keep the cows away, but I have to play a tea party with her. Keep reading. I don't like this kind of tea party, but Grace says it's important to keep the cows away. Mama was sad that they couldn't find Effie. Papa said she's been gone so long and they should put a cross up, but Mama won't let him cause she thinks she'll come back. Papa said she's only 11. How far could she have gone? And Mama started crying again. Don't want to play tea party anymore, but Grace says I has to. Oh no! So, so, so Effie, I'm willing to bet, is like the little sister and the blood goblet is, F is like, the blood in the goblet was Effie's blood, I'm willing to bet. Oh no. Papa was out two days looking for Joey, but of course he didn't find him. Mama cries so much, I tried to tell her him and Effie are helping keep the cows away, but she don't understand. I told Grace I'm not playing tea party again, but she says I gotta, and if the I don't, cows will eat all three of us. She said either I get Mama or Papa to play, or else I gotta play by myself. The tea party was a consumption of blood for the little doll. Oh no, that's horrible. Alright, well, the only thing we got left to do is fight. Fight, fight, fight! We got to jump on them this time. Okay, so what do we got? Attack. Okay, so melee will go more than a pistol. I could also cast a spell, but I've only got one action. I've got four action points, actually. Holy crap, I can do a lot. Um. I wonder. I have four action points, but what will happen if I just attack? Susie will hastily construct some cover in front of him. Oh! That can actually be useful. But she can also shoot for 11 damage. That's pretty good. A nice little wall to keep me protected. Ish. Or not. <laughs> Apparently not, because it did protect crap. Guns ablazing! By the soft light of the fading embers, you see a glint of light from below. You hold your nose with one hand as you fish out your prize with another. You got the toilet pistol. Susie carves another notch in the stock of her rifle. Cow hate flashes in her eyes. Her resolve intensifies. Susie has become stronger. Must stay determined! <laughs> she won't stop until all the cows are gone. So what is the toilet pistol? Deals stench damage instead of physical, applies five poison to the enemy. That actually might be more useful than the deputy pistol I have. Can I do anything with the with my partner here? I don't think I can. It's a shame. It's just a shame. 
Well, it looks like that's all I'm going to be able to do here at the Stearns Ranch. Wander? I can do that? You come across the corpse of a cowboy. How do you know it's the corpse of a cowboy? Well, you see by his outfit that he is a cowboy, and you see by the lack of flesh that he is a corpse. Check for useful gear. You won't be needing these pants anymore. Thick chaps. I'll put them to good use. Okay, well, that was a nice little thing. So, if I was to keep doing that whole, like, wander... You find a crate lying by the side of the trail. It's lid knocked loose. It has fell off the back of a car LTD stenciled on the side, which seems a bit on the nose. But hey, free stuff is free stuff. You fish through the crate and find your help and... and the Kate and help yourself to the meager but free contents. A lasso. This rope has already been tied into a lasso for your convenience, which is lovely because you have no idea how to tie a lasso. I actually wouldn't. This item is used in combat, so you disable the target for two rounds. Depressed rancher candy. Like all things for ranchers, this candy was a lot better before the cows came home. Increases your melee damage by seven for the rest of the day. There's a lot of stuff that is able to do that kind of thing. Well, I guess it's time to go to the Dave Yard. As you're riding down the tree, a dirty urchin jumps out and points a toy pistol at you and demands that you pay the toll by doing 20 push-ups. Ignore the little scam. I don't have any options because I don't have muscles. I don't have me muscles. Died with his boots on, but not his pants. Dave B. I got brown boots. Might spooky, nervous. Hell, after what I've seen, human skeletons are a walk in the dang park. <laughs> I would say, what do you think we should do next, but I don't think she'll really have anything. So I got brown boots, thick chaps, and a, uh, my inventory is literally full. What does this do? <gasps> oh, nice! It's a nice little spell damage amplifier. I could definitely make great use of that. Still not sure what's up. Oh, yeah, okay. Never mind. It's just food. Uh, provided to pry things open on certain places. Let's see. I guess I could sell the, uh, the the saber because the crowbar does just as much damage. Okay. Let's go ahead and put on the crowbar because it's really useful. Hey, I didn't know I was playing Half-Life. These remains look pretty restless. Put them down for good. We got the jump on them this time. I got five action points to use. How much health is this thing? It's got 12 points of health. I could probably do this up here. Defense. Some fire. Up and fire. Beam. And then have her just take it. Jeez. She can do 20 damage. I don't need to do a thing. She can handle it all on her own. I got a handful of loose teeth. That's probably just for selling. Here lies Dave C. Dave J. There's a lot of Daves in here. He's holding a piece of board. I'm guessing that's like for extra damage or something. What? Why did it... Oh, okay. Apparently I can click the other areas. I can target Susie. Let's not do that, shall we? All right, let's just cast a piece of fire, and boom. And now she can just finish it off immediately. I don't really don't have to cast my spells. Oh, a gold tooth, nice. Dave L, Dave G, there's a lot of Daves. Oh boy, free lunch. Let's not do that just yet. Beat the dickens out of them. We got to jump on them this time. Let's just attack, and then have Susie finish him off. Bang! Because apparently she's way too powerful right out of the gate. Skull chips. Okay, so Dave G. Dave D. Dave G. There's another Dave G? Murdered by a different feller named Dave G. Okay. It's a pile of bones that isn't moving around for a change. Stick through it. Skull with an odd tag on it. 
Uh, it's mostly just boring broken bones, but you do find a skull with a weird tag. Where's the, where's the skull? Here is the skull. Which has inter-cemetery loan on one side and some notes on the other. The tag on the skull has a Syrian number that says it was borrowed from the submission catacombs on February 19th, 19th, 1886? Jeez, this thing is really late. The back of the tag has the catacombs address on it. I discovered the location to the old mission. Skulls, check them out. Yay, so we got a new location. We're also inside a crypt. So there's more skulls, but I can't dig through that one. Can't dig through there. Can't dig through here. Hey! Some kind of ritual circle drawn on the ground in red chalk. It's a big stone sarcophagus. Sarcophagus. It's a pile of mostly burned rags that maybe used to be a person. Gore splattered scroll. Human ashes. There's some kind of receipt. A rope receipt. Uh huh. A gore splattered scroll. The scroll is almost too covered in blood and viscera to read. Luckily for you, that you've gotten all that practice reading inside of a dog. What? Inside of a dog? What is that supposed to mean? What? You scrape the largest of the giblets off the scroll and read it. It says that to take a pile of human ashes, spread them out in the shape of a person inside the red chalk sir, ritual circle, then sprinkle them with stardust and place mostly perfect or better glass sphere where the heart would be. Anyways, that's the gist of it. The actual text has a lot more of these and thous and that, such and like that. Plus, there's a bunch of weird gibberish you're supposed to say out loud while doing it. Okay. So, it was a ritualistic uh, scroll that just is completely useless at the moment. Do, 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 do. A blank postcard. Or spawn the wizard. What? Maybe you should write down to your family back home in case you don't know how the mail works. You should send these by going to a building called Post Office and giving it to the correspondence wizard who works there. Okay then. Yeah, I figured as much. So the crackers. Robe receipt. Here we go. This is a receipt for a delivery of 150 black silk robes. Sounds pretty ominous. Yeah, thank. It's time you started gathering clues about the whole perma, uh, perambulating dead situation that's going on around these parts. You grab a notebook and a paper clip for the, the receipt to the first page. Necromancer journal. I should check that out. This is a collection of the clues you've acquired in the search for the necromancer's home base. Uh, and examine the information. You found a receipt of deli for delivery of robes. Looking at it more closely, you see that there's a surcharge for delivery past Boulder Pass. That means the necromancer's lair is definitely west of the mountains. Good to know. Progress. Looks like that's everything you've got so far. So, west of whatever else there is. Hmm, let's see. According to that gross scroll, you need human ashes, some stardust, and a glass sphere if you want to do this ritual. You dig through all your stuff, you don't find anything, any glass spheres. Nuts. Well, where am I supposed to get any of the other stuff? And if all I need is a glass sphere, then... Okay. Howdy there, Undyne. Let's go. Let's see what happens if we wander around for a little bit. Whee! You discovered a new location, the Shaggy Dog Cave. Let's go. Wow, that's way off. How did I wander all the way over there? What's she... What's she freaking out about? What's new, Cece? There's another ranch out this way. The Butterfield Ranch. Dairy farm, mainly. Alright, we can check it out. What do you think we should do next? Uh, okay. Never mind. Hey, it's another one of these beer barrel cactuses. Alright, into the cave we go. Some fellow was was really into plaques. Think they're important? Only one way to find out. There's a plaque bolted to the cave wall here. Record of the events expedition to and into Shaggy Dog Cave, November 1887, as reported by Jim Plackwright. His name was Plackwright. 
That's it? That's it? That is all that plaque says. Oh, okay, there's more plaques. chest was locked with an ancient and rusting iron padlock, which broke easily from a single swing of our pickaxe. We opened it slowly, and the flickering light of the antique oil lamp shone brightly upon jewels of every color and shining ingots of precious metals, just as promised. By the legends of Black Cole Jr., joyous at our triumph, we loaded the chest into our wagon and began the journey home. Thank you for reading, and may your own endeavors be equally successful. It's a hole, completely empty one. There was no point. No point in going through here and reading all that crap. This was literally a pointless endeavor. I wasted all that time reading plaques. What? You come up to face to face with the three bandits pushing a large barrel marked TNT down the trail. The four of you stare at each other for a moment, unsure of how to deal with this potentially violent happenstance. Inquire about the TNT, which requires Outfox and two, which I don't even think I have one. Just die for cover and fight. I'm not sure what happens if I surrender.
Fire beam! Kaboom! What did that do? It didn't do anything. Fine, shoot him. I mean, shouldn't it have done something? Oh, okay, that's what it was supposed to do. Okay. Bam! If he wasn't to die from the poison, he'd die from my shots. I got the bandit pistol, a black hat, and some experience in meat. Whee! Okay. Uh... Let's head back to dirt water for a little bit. Oh, overturn the wagon. Look through the wreckage. Advanced bean craft. Oh, I got bean crafted spell. I got a bean craft tome. Read it. Read it immediately. Where is it? Where is the bean craft? Here it is. Okay, so I can learn Blood Beans, use the Old Beans, Northern Blizzard. Okay, so what's this? There's a chapter about cooking bean dishes so small that they have to be served intra intravenously. Blood Beans, a skill that lets you regenerate health during combat. Oh, so health regeneration. I could last longer in a fight. Uh, meditation techniques to help you concentrate while cooking and or fighting gives you a skill that temporarily increases your mysticality during a fight. So, more spell power. Great. There's a whole set of recipes for ice cream... Ice cold bean based desserts gives Great Northern Blizzard a spell which deals cold damage to all of your enemies. So I have options that all definitely seem like very good ones. I was lucky I got across that book. Hmm. The question is, is which one should I learn? I kind of want the blood beans because the additional regeneration might help me in a fight. And I've always got like my Captain Fire bean spell, whatever it is. But then again, I can always use the old bean ability and increase my fire ability and then it's just kaboom, just de destroying quickly. But the Great Northern Blizzard spell could be useful for AoE mobs, like the one I just encountered. Who knows, that might actually be more useful than anything. Let's go with the Great Northern Blizzard. Woohoo! At some point, the book got completely covered in a snowdrift and now it's all soggy and ruined. Okay. Oh, okay. Un Undyne Winnie's as you approach. Cobble her mane. Comb her mane. And then leave her alone. That's nice that I'm able to comb her mane. Okay, so let's go ahead, trade in some stuff, and then I think I'm gonna go ahead and end there. Why are you hurting? You okay, buddy? I'm pretty sure my leg is broken, so no. What happened? Traffic accident? No, it just sort of broke all of a sudden. Guess I don't get enough vitamins or whatever. Good nutrition can be difficult in this day and age. I'm going to need some medicine for this. Can you help me? Sure. Thank you. There's a mission up north. The nuns there run a little hospital and sell medical supplies. Can you get me some broken leg pills? There's pills specifically for fixing your broken legs. I already got your flowers. You're welcome. Okay, there's nothing else this way. So... Okay, she doesn't have anything, she just wants to say hi. Or I just want to say hi, either way. Oh. We'd like to, well, I'd like to send a postcard. All right, let's have at it. You write a quick note to Rufus, letting him know that you what you've been up to, and that'll be, oh, it's one of them prepaid ones. That'll be zero meets then. Thanks! Coolio, okay, so I don't have to spend a dime. If you can call what I used in this game dying. Alright, well that looks like that's going to have to be about it for now. I've got to go ahead and jump off because unfortunately, time is short and... and uh, it, I, it's a shame that I can't get more in than what I have to because unfortunately, uh, time really is not my friend in these situations. And I'm already past the limit that I normally set for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. I really didn't make any any good progress because, oh my god. Shaggy Dog Cave. More like Placard Cave because it's full of friggin' plaques and absolutely nothing else. It was pointless just to go there. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. I've got... 
I can't believe that I went through all that trouble just to read a bunch of plaques. I mean, it wasn't all plaques, but still, it was the point of it all. Anyways, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Leave a comment in the section below, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Take care, Savior.